Now, some of you may or may not be aware of two-part epoxy clays, and there are a number of different manufacturers that actually make them under different brand names. Now, in this video, I'm not specifically talking about Abe's Epoxy Sculpt, which is this one here. It's just I happen to use their product. So in this video, I'm really generalizing across the board here. So just keep that in mind. Now, epoxy clays are a putty-like consistency. Now, I'll show you that in a moment. And they are self-curing and they generally harden within 24 hours. Now, they adhere to nearly any surface. But like any product that you're looking at using, always do a test first to make sure it's suitable for your job. Now, they are really quite handy when you want to adhere bulky embellishments into your mosaics. Now, when it comes to using epoxy clays, the manufacturer recommends using gloves while you're mixing the two parts A and B together. Now, there are videos floating around of artists using epoxy clays without any gloves on, and they're mixing the two parts A and B together. However, I strongly recommend that you use gloves when mixing parts A and B together. In fact, I take it a step further and I use the gloves at all times while handling epoxy clays. And I like to use these gloves because they're quite long and they go over the cuffs uh, of my jumpers that I wear. So I find these work quite well for my needs. But I do really strongly suggest that you don't mix parts A and B together without gloves. In fact, I, I strongly suggest, and this is again my personal opinion, that you continue to wear the gloves because the chemicals are still within parts A and B after they are mixed. It is also advisable to use epoxies in a well-ventilated room and also wear protective eyewear and wash your hands regularly before eating or drinking. Now I consider that to be common sense before eating and drinking, but I just thought I'd put that in there because sometimes people get wrapped up in what they're doing and they may forget to do that. Now, the other thing is it's always important to read the manufacturer's safety data sheets before buying or using any of these epoxy clay products. In fact, it's always advisable to read those safety data sheets before buying or using any product. You need to read those safety data sheets so you can take the necessary safety precautions to protect your health. There are many products in this industry that we use that contain chemicals and we need to ensure that we protect our health from them so that we can help minimize the risks and continue to enjoy what we do. So I cannot stipulate that enough. Always read the manufacturer safety data sheets because I know when people suggest a product or recommend a product, people just automatically go off and buy it and start using it without reading those safety data sheets and also the technical data sheets. Those data sheets are not hard to read. They're there to protect your health and also to ensure, like I said before, that you can continue to do what you want to do with minimizing the risk to your health. Now we've got parts A and parts B. We'll remove the lids. And when I've taken out the pieces that I want, uh, then I put the lid straight back on again. So we need equal parts. And I'll just remove some out of here. And I just roll it around in a ball. Give me an idea of the size. And then I get the same size out of part A. I put it in a ball. And we're looking at equal parts. Now you can weigh them, but I uh, generally just eyeball it because I have a fairly good eye for size. Get off that one. There you go. And I'll put the lids back on. Move them out the way. And that's our two parts. Now, all we're going to do now is just mix them together. And what we're aiming for is to get rid of that marble effect that's in this. So I don't know whether you can see that, but see how we've got the two different um, two different uh, shades of colour of grey. So we're just going to now totally mix that thoroughly. Now if it's cool, you'll find that it's going to be harder to mix. But what I generally do in that situation, uh, I generally just hold it in my hand for a while and just roll it around. 
and the warmth from my hand will, will make that easier to actually mix together. Uh, or sometimes what I'll do is, uh, you know, hold it in the sun for a few minutes and then mix it. And we're just mixing it around and it, you know, it'll take you only a few minutes to do this depending on the temperature of the room. And there's no way I would do this without using gloves, but that's just me personally. There you go, we've got our epoxy clay all mixed and now we're ready for using it. Okay, I've got my wooden bird here. Now all I'm going to do is rip off a piece of this epoxy clay and just roll it into a, a um, oh, just a sausage shape. And when I'm not using my epoxy clay, I just put it on a saucer like that. I don't want to put it on the wood because wood, wood can absorb things. So I'm just putting it like that. And the working time is very dependent on how the environment is, what the temperature is. Normally I mix up small batches of the clay and working time I'm looking at around about the 30 minute mark. Now the epoxy clays can still feel sticky but they can also lose their adhesiveness if that makes sense, if they still feel sticky. So your working time uh, that you have to work with, I would assume is going to be around about the 30 minute mark. Some people can probably stretch that out, but for me, it's around about 30 minutes. Um, and the optimum, the optimum adhesive time is within 30 minutes. Anything after that, I have found, I tend to uh, find that there's not as much adhesiveness and the last thing you want to do is stick everything down and then find that it's not going to work for you. So all I'm going to do is just put a bit down here. Now the reason why I'm using, this is where this comes in handy is because the epoxy clay is great if you're wanting to build something up. I don't know whether you can see that on camera or if the piece is not totally flat. Now if I was to use a glue on this, then it would only have a small surface area to stick to because it's, it's got a curve in it. So by doing this, and using epoxy clay, it works really quite well. Now, if I wanted to, I could even add, get another piece of this. A bit much. And you don't need a huge amount. I could even add, actually I will use that piece. I could even add this into it like that to give it some depth. Now you might say, well, what do we do with this bit that's here that, that people can see? Well, you can camouflage that. You can use pearls, you can use buttons, you can use uh, tiles, you can use anything you want to camouflage it. For instance, if we wanted to put some uh, pearls in, I happen to have some here, then we could get our tweezers. Oops, lost that one. And then we can then just camouflage the clay. Don't want to see those holes or I don't want to see the holes. So I'll just turn it over. And the beauty about this is you can adjust this fifth I know I want that up high. You can, you can tilt that up higher, but just don't do it when you're attaching the beads like I've just done because it'll fall off. So you can just keep doing this and pushing the beads right into the epoxy clay. You probably can't see this because my hand's in the way, but There you go. So that gives you, I hope you can see that now, that gives you a bit of a um, more camouflaging thing if you want to cover that up. Now, one thing is when you were, when you were doing anything with epoxy clay, grout does not stick to it. So if you happen to be doing 
So you're going to stick some tiles down. Let's put some tiles down here. Something like that. What you don't want to do is get grout. Um, is get grout. What you don't want to do is get epoxy clay in the grout lines, so it, it it's high up because your your grout will not stick to it. So make sure that the epoxy clay is pushed down, so there's room for the grout to adhere. Now, other things you can do, and I find really really good. So let me get my little container here. We'll come back to that in a minute. And we just need to find something smallish. Let's look at this. That would work quite well. So we'll bring him back to here. And this has a bit of a bale on it. I think that's what you call it. So we'll cut him off. And normally then I would sand this down or grind this down because I really don't want those little sharp bits, but let's pretend those those bits are now grinded down. Well, this is where this comes into it because if I was to use glue on this piece, it's not totally flat, but by using a little bit of epoxy clay, we can now push that down. And so you can see it works really well for shapes that are not flat, where there's less surface area for glue to adhere to. The other thing is too, it's great if you're going to work on vertical surfaces. And of course you can add a little bit of clay behind this piece here if you wanted to. If you wanted to build that up a little bit higher, so you can create a really big 3D effect. And then you can push this down inside so you don't see a lot of it. And then of course you could camouflage that as well. So I hope you can kind of see that in there. One thing you do need to do, I find, is if I'm working with gloves, uh, there's residue on the gloves from the, from the epoxy clays. And what I like to do is wipe the pieces over with a damp cloth. And this gets rid of any residue. And I do this before I move on to the next, the next area. I like to do it in stages because this just makes sure that your tessera cleans up really, really well, including the pearls. You wipe the pearls over. And there is safety solvent as well. And I don't know why it's called safety solvent um, because it, I would say it is a chemical, uh, but definitely this works extremely well but water works well too. And if you find you're wanting to smooth out the um, epoxy clay on say the bird and you're, you're putting it in a reasonable area, but you want it really smooth, you can use a bit of safety solvent on it or you can use a little bit of water and rub it on and it'll smooth out anyway. So you don't really need this, but I tell you what, this, this does clean up beautifully. But you can get away with a bit of water as well. So, you know, you can add other things into it too, like buttons if you wanted to. If you want to do, you know, really three-dimensional pieces, you can add all sorts of things into the epoxy clays. It just depends what you want to do. And I'm only using this lot here just to show you what you can adhere into it. But like I say, your working time will depend on the environment that you're in. Now, one of the important things you do need to do when you're working with epoxy, epoxy clay is you need to clean up your work area where you have been working. For instance, here, where you've got this piece coming out. If I'm not going to put another piece there and adhere another tile there, then I need to clean that up. Now see how this is a little bit high here, this uh, epoxy clay? What we need to do is scrape that out. You just scrape it out and you put this piece in with that piece there. 
and then you can push that back together because like I said you want to keep those grout lines very clear and not filling up with epoxy clay and all these areas here you can just push this out and this is where a knitting needle comes in really handy or a scraper because once this stuff sets it's like rock it's a bit like thin set to the point where you don't want to leave anything that is going to get in the way of you attaching your next piece of tessera and the same down here just getting rid of all that but if I was adhering like if I was going to continue on I could easily adhere to that without a problem but remember don't allow your don't allow your uh, epoxy clay to be where you don't want it to be take care of it straight away but I've completed quite a few pieces using uh, epoxy clay and I find it works really really well just make sure that you don't have the clay where you don't want it if you're not continuing on make sure you wipe the tessera over as you go or before it cures because it does have a residue especially using gloves but it's much safer to use gloves and getting residue over your pieces than, than taking your gloves off and getting residue on your hands and that's all you do just wipe it over as you go and then you'll be fine and it'll come up all beautiful so anyway I hope this video has helped you I hope you've taken something away from it if you have any comments put them down in the bottom of the comment section and I'll see you in the next one enjoy <laughs>